Today, I'm going to be explaining why you shouldn't ever leave the backyard of this backroom's level. Trust me, you really don't want to. Hundreds of people have gone missing back there, and we don't really know why. Hey, y'all, I'm Brugley. Welcome to the third episode of this year's Brugley Summer Spectacular, which, of course, is the series where I go over all the backroom's levels in order. This video is all about level 62 of the backrooms. Without any more blabbering, let's get into the video, shall we? So level 62 of the back rooms is classified as a class two difficulty and is unsafe with a low entity count. Now I wouldn't trust that level classification at all and you'll see why later, but the levels document is very interesting because it's marked with a warning that says, quote, this file is only accessible to personnel authorized by the current senior archivist. Unauthorized access to this file will result in an automatic self-censorship of the file's contents. We will also not hesitate to take direct action if needed, end quote. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty strange to start off a level like that, but hey, apparently some of the information is uh, secret, but that's what I'm here for. The level description starts like this. Level 62 takes the appearance of a backyard specifically the backyard of an older, abandoned-looking house. This entire yard area is surrounded by a weird wall that's really overgrown with vegetation. The vegetation is thick, and you can't really see through it or over it because the wall is too tall. Inside one corner of this backyard, there's a well-maintained doghouse that's just sitting there. Kind of gives you an uneasy feeling because the doghouse sticks out. It's new and clean, and the house that it's behind is old and abandoned. So why is this doghouse clean? Anyways, that's the first part of the level. Just a strange liminal backyard that's surrounded by a fence with thick trees and grass growing over the top of it. The next part is where the level really starts to show its true colors and get just weird, to be honest. In another corner of this wall in the backyard, there's a broken out piece of wood and brick that's just big enough for someone to fit through. This broken hole actually leads you to the next part of the level, the part beyond this backyard. The area behind the wall takes the appearance of a deeply vast jungle forest. The forest itself isn't really that special, it's just a massive, dark, thick forest with trees. But you can't see the trees from the start of the level, since you literally cannot see over that wall. But it's not the forest that's creepy or weird, it's what's hiding in the jungle that's creepy and weird. The forest also has several psychological effects that it deploys on things inside of it. We'll get into all that in a second. But apparently a ton of people have gone missing inside these trees somewhere. And it's been a massive thing because so many people have gone missing that people are like searching to find them. Like Meg is literally sending people to find them and it's not working. It's believed that some type of entity is attacking people in these woods. There's been huge claw marks seen on trees and massive branches snapped as well. I mean, to me, it sounds like a big creature. I'm no expert. The rest of the level is archived into these audio logs between two people who discover the level and discovered how dangerous it is, and I'm gonna read it right now. The two people's names are Juanita and Tala. Now, didn't you say you upgraded some things with their communications and tracking system? Yes. Connie said that the signals here get cut off easy and interferes with how we find people. So I tweaked the emergency alert of the communication device and it now sets off when your device loses signal or when you press it manually. Right. Do I still need to report to you every 30 minutes? Of course. That emergency alert can only send a distress signal to headquarters. I would still need your most current whereabouts prior to the alert setting off. All right then. Currently 10 minutes have passed and I'm about uh, half a football field away from the house. You are 360 feet away from base. Have you found anything? No, I've mostly found death moths. I've seen some scratches on trees, meaning I might be close to the bodies. What about the house? Have you checked it out more thoroughly? The doors are blocked from the inside of the house. I might have to break a window or two. I'll just add whatever I find into the report. Carry on with your exploration. Tala, it's been 30 minutes now. Any new updates? No response. Tala, did you hear me? No response. Tala, are you okay? Loud beeping from the tracking device can be heard. Recording ends. Archive log two. Okay, so Daga is on his way. I did not like this. I shouldn't be worried. It's fine. It happens all the time. Whatever. 
Tyler will be back in a few hours when Daga finds her, so I should just focus on looking around this house. The house is falling apart. There are scratches everywhere. Right, right, the report. So there are three bedrooms in the second floor of the house, as far as I can see. Honestly, the second floor is in worse condition than the first floor. It looks like something got in here and just ravaged the entire place. Obviously, I haven't yet found anything on the dead family lost from our system. I'll go check the bedrooms if there's anything to report. The other rooms don't have anything notable other than the photos of the deceased, which we already have in our system. But the last room on the second floor is jammed. I think it's locked from the inside. Fumbling can be heard, muffled sounds of a door being kicked in can be heard, a loud grinding sound can be heard. A broken window? Wait, did something attack the family? Ugh, smell in here. What's that stain? The door creaks slowly and soft growling can be heard. Recording ends. Approximately 20 minutes after the distress signal was sent, Daga had found both Juanita and Tala shaken, but with only mild injuries. The device Juanita had, had broken on impact sometime probably after the last recovered log we had found was automatically sent from the device to our system. Tala found the remains of the family in the jungle, which seemed to interfere with our tracking system the deeper she went. As with whatever the thing was that attacked Juanita, it was a hound that she had killed. We found a collar on it with the name Sunny on the tag. I believe this might give you a good theory on the effects of the level, Ghani. End quote. Yeah, those are some pretty insane logs, I would say. If you didn't get it or you skipped through it, I'm going to summarize it really quickly what happened. So the family that used to live in that old house at the start of the level seemingly was found not alive in the woods and a hound entity that seemingly used to be the dog in the doghouse of the backyard was the reason for this attack. We don't know if it's the reason for all the other attacks, but it was for this one, it seems. So the forest behind the house and behind the wall seems to have the ability to drive people insane and give anyone inside it these hallucination effects and other things like it. These effects aren't really understood, and we don't know why it happens, but we do know that the deeper you go into the forest, the seemingly worse it gets. The more you morph, and the more you change, and the more you go insane. It's thought that in a weird way this forest calls people to it and kind of attracts them to it. And for some reason, people continue to walk deeper and deeper, even though it's thought that deeper and deeper into these woods, there are creatures that haven't been documented. These weird creatures might be the other explanation for the disappearances or attacks on other wanderers and people, but we don't know. My advice is to just not go back there. Pretty simple, I would say. It's also thought that this level somehow turns the humans that go into it into insanities eventually, if they go deep enough. So whatever you do, that's why you should never go into the woods behind the fence on this level. Because it's either being attacked by some weird creature or being turned into an insanity. So, I mean, you, you pick your poison. To enter this level, you have to walk into a shed on level 37, and to exit, you have to stay alive in the forest area for over a week, and it's actually thought that if you do this, you'll be sent to level negative 4. Or you can go inside a shed that you find, and you'll be sent back to level 37. But yeah, a level with a forest that makes your sanity go away, and it drives you deeper and deeper until you're not even human anymore. Sounds like a pretty fun time to me, to be honest. That's it for the video. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you so much. Seriously, like, I love you all so much. The channel is just going amazing. I'm super excited. I got so much more content coming for your way on Brugly, Toogly, and Spoogly. All my channels, if you want more of me, check them out in the description. Uh, follow me on Twitter as well, in the description below. I tweet sometimes, I guess. Uh, make sure to join the Discord in the description below as well. And thank you all so much for everything you do. Seriously, I just, I love and appreciate all of you. And I'm eternally grateful uh, for the opportunity that you've given me to do this thing full time. I'm just, I'm so grateful. The Brooklyn movement is insane and I can't wait to expand over the years. Thanks so much for everything and whatever channel I see you on next, I'll see you there.